Okay guys, I am going to do a few little mini videos, if you will, and hopefully it will help you understand um, some basic concepts that I was just blew my mind in the beginning. Um, I am not a professional by any means. I have not been doing this very long myself, so obviously everything I say is not going to be perfect, but um, and it's more of a, on a conceptual level. I went ahead and screenshot a uh, code pen, just a blank a code pen because I figured we are all familiar with that so that was something that we could use as a starting point because I think everyone kind of understands what's happening there. Um, there are three different screens in code pen. There's HTML, there's CSS, and there's J um, JS. And then there's this like white blank thing and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so HTML is the framework. I call him the architect. Um, he is going to be the, um, the builder, if you will. Pretend that we are building a laundromat and you need someone to come in and you need them to build the walls and you need them to burn, build the furniture. Um, but they are not going to have any sort of capabilities to color things or make things pretty or make things work. It will just be static and it stays right as it is. So we are going to write next to him uh, walls and furniture, just hopefully as a little bit of a reminder. And we'll talk about his briefcase, briefcase in a moment. All right, then there's CSS, that one's in the middle. And um, I like to call her the decorator. So she really can't go do her job until Mr. Architect has done his. He has to build at least some walls or at least a wall. <laughs> um, obviously it wouldn't stand very long, but he there has to be something in HTML for CSS to actually work, um, at least in my metaphor, if you will. So she, I think of her as um, making things pretty, making things pretty okay and then we have just recently this week been introduced to uh, JavaScript pretend that the architect and the decorator have done their job they have put in all the furniture they put in all the walls they've done everything they possibly can for this laundromat um, but they need some action. They need some things to actually happen in there, some things to sell the product, um, some kind of excitement. So they also have to have some kind of washers. And that is how I think of JavaScript. And this gets more advanced as you um, learn different things. You could carry this metaphor on forever if you want. Um, but the washer, I like to think of, of it as an input-output system. Um, the input can come from all kinds of different places. It could come from an actual user. It could come from... The decorator it could be information coming from the decorator or it could be information coming from the architect and it can pull from there if they are able to communicate with each other which they are we don't quite know how yet but we'll get into that later on so i even like to think about um, these buttons um, and what they might do in javascript um, and in all washing machines you're going to need some kind of basket to uh, catch that output Okay, so input's gonna go in here. It's going to get washed and washed and washed and washed, and then it is gonna come out as an output. This is a very, very, very rudimentary or basic explanation of what's happening, but um, think of JavaScript as just kind of a doer. It's an action. It's something that you can um, put in, change it, rework it, add something, and then it can come back out. So all of this is happening right now. Pretend that we have not logged it to any kind of viewport at all. Um, we could we could write HTML, we could write CSS, and we could write JavaScript. And some of you have found that in Visual Studio Code, you can't see anything happening. So that's super frustrating to you um, because you haven't quite learned how to do live or how things link up or, or any of that. So that's why we turn to CodePen. CodePen is awesome because um, it will automatically be shown or rendered in what we call the viewport. Uh, the viewport could be any screen. It doesn't matter what size. It could be an iPhone. It could be a TV. It could be um, a desktop computer. But that is where we have Mr. Viewport. So pretend Mr. Architect is drawing out his sketch of his laundromat. Okay, this is our laundromat. He has a briefcase full of these things called tags. They are sometimes called tags, um, tag elements, elements. I'm sure there's a million more names that I don't know, but I'm just a noob. 
Um, and just so you know where I got all this information, I use W3 schools a ton. I feel like it's probably one of the easiest um, information sources. Um, okay, so Mr. Architect has these tags in his briefcase and he wants to build, let's say he wants to build like a little greeting area in his laundromat and he wants it to maybe be about this size. And he also wants to maybe put a staff lounge. I don't know. He wants somewhere where his staff can sit and hang out. Again, he's an architect. We're drawing a, um, a view looking down onto, onto the building, just like an architect would lay something out, like a blueprint, if you will. Um, and then maybe he wants his places for his washing machines to be here. And maybe he wants one here. He could have one here. He could even, really, we're not going to get that um, complicated yet, but he could have a washing machine here. This would be something called a nested tag. Okay, so say he wanted one there too. Just to keep things simple, though, we're not even going to go there yet because that's a whole other nesting of elements is a little bit trickier. You can't get that to erase for some reason. Okay, so anyway, let's just pretend that it's not there. Okay. All right, so say he wants to make one of his rooms or his walls or even a, a bit of furniture in his laundry mat. He's going to need to pull out one of his tags. This is kind of his um, toolbox, if you will, to, to build his framework, his HTML framework. Say he wants to pick a list tag. I mean, it doesn't really matter. That's where he wants to start. Sorry, guys, I just sold something on Etsy, so just ignore that. Okay, there's going to be a starting tag, L-I, and there's going to be a ending tag on li okay and what that really creates in html is just a box they're pretty powerful say he wants to create another room um maybe he wants to make a button this time he needs a start tag for his button and he needs an end tag for his button this concept kind of blew my mind at first so if you think of these tags, every time you see a pair of tags together, it creates a box. It doesn't really matter right now what name um, is within the tag. For your purposes, you just need to understand that each time you see a tag, it's going to create a box. So we could go back to our example. Hopefully my eraser won't be moody this time. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to name these because that doesn't make any sense to HTML at all. So we're gonna name it something like maybe this. Maybe I want this first one to be a list. Okay. Maybe I want this next one to be a button. Yeah, let's erase this so we don't get real confused here. Okay, button. That's my start tag, and this is my end tag. Okay, so I've created two boxes here, and let's change the color so that you can see it. We're gonna put this into code too, eventually, so it'll make more sense. Okay, so this is one box. This is another box. Okay, and I don't know, maybe down here I wanna put, uh, I don't know. I want to make this a span. Obviously, there's reasons that you're going to pick these and you're not just going to randomly do this. But um, for now, hopefully you just understand that each one makes a box. Because that's kind of our goal with this. Okay, and then there's another box. This is the beginning of the concept of this thing called the box model. Had I known how important this was in the beginning, maybe I wouldn't have struggled so much with learning all of this okay now it is important what type of tag each one does and honestly I don't know what all the tags done, does do because I'm not smart enough quite yet um, but you can go to w3 schools and there is a reference for all the tags okay but just know that they're called tags and the job of those tags is to create a box and it's going to have some kind of content in it um, and that is the, where your text would be or it could be some kind of picture in there. OK, 
okay or it could be like a, a just a box of color you could have it say you want this to be red it's going to hold some kind of content so we have tags that are also called elements um, and they're going to hold content and create a box all right now we have to talk about the decorator there's a reason that i drew her suitcase or her purse this way i know i'm the best drawer ever you guys are so jealous Okay, so her job is to make things pretty because pretend that this is just a black and white laundromat right now. It has walls, it has furniture, and it's super boring. So we now are like, okay, all right, let's make things pretty. In order to do that, we need to first pick some kind of property. Say I want to change the color of this button. Okay, I want, maybe I want to make that button, I don't know, yellow. All right, so I have to first tell HTML and Mr. Architect what we're actually doing. What property are we targeting? Um, so we are going to write color. And we also need to tell Mr. HTML tag what, um, what color we want. I mean, there's a ton of different colors. You have pink, blue, yellow, green, and so on and so on. Um, and there's many different ways you could write the color in too. You could do a hex code, uh, RGB, or just regular color. Say I want it to have yellow. And we're gonna talk more about these pieces here soon. This is just an introduction. Okay, and now we can actually color that yellow because we have now set up a box. We have set up a button box here that misses decorator can talk to okay so pretend maybe there's colons here and you'll understand why soon enough i promise all right for now that is our end of our first video stay tuned and i will explain more of this for you